I thought I might just introduce or reintroduce Maslow's hierarchy of needs and explain a little bit of the evolution that's happened to the model since he first introduced it in 1943. The first iteration of Maslow's model had uh, five layers. At the bottom was physiological needs, followed by safety needs, love needs, esteem needs, and self-actualization. So first up on the bottom of the pyramid are those physiological needs. These are the things we require for survival, breathing, sleep, water, food, and sex. Next on the pyramid are safety needs. Needs are met when the person feels safe and secure. They're not at risk of any physical or emotional harm. In the middle of Maslow's pyramid, we have the emotional needs, the love needs. Once a person has satisfied the lower needs, physiological and safety needs, higher needs become more important and more possible. Our need for friends, our sense of belonging and our ability to grow and receive love are all examples of emotional needs. These emotional needs are the things that we consolidate in this stage of our development. Next, it becomes important as independent and free human beings to experience a sense of esteem, that we matter, that we are important, and that we feel good about ourselves. We can experience these needs, these feelings, by developing self-respect, skills, and confidence, and gaining recognition for our endeavors. In this early version of Maslow's pyramid, self-actualization is at the top of the pyramid. This self-actualization can be defined as uh, reaching your full potential, being the best you can be. This is the need for self-fulfillment and a drive to really be that person you truly are. One of the key things to remember is that we move up and down the pyramid according to how our needs are being met. Some stages we might change something in the, one of the basic or lower levels, um, may change houses, change jobs, so our security and our safety doesn't seem as strong. So therefore we go down in our actualization, and then we have to rebuild and move back up. So the actualization process is more of a journey than a destination. Now one of the interesting things about the hierarchy or the pyramid is that in the 1943 article, Maslow was also talking about cognitive needs but they've generally not been included in the diagram. So the next phase, I'm going to talk about those cognitive needs and build the story about how they moved into the pyramid uh, over a period of time. So here we see the cognitive needs added at the side. Uh, Maslow thought that uh, two key needs were our desire to know, curiosity, exploration, then the second cognitive need, our desire to understand, to synthesize and organize information. And just like the other needs, these ones develop from each other. Knowledge, knowing, develops into understanding. It wasn't until a little bit later that Maslow incorporated the cognitive needs into the pyramid. He placed them above the esteem needs. This has some pretty big implications because the physiological, the safety, the love and esteem needs all have to be present before knowing and understanding. They all have to be present before academic skills can be developed. At about the same time the cognitive needs were being included, Maslow also thought, felt that it was important to include an aesthetic need, a need for an understanding and appreciation of beauty, appreciation of art, of music, and dance, drama, all the aesthetics. In a final redevelopment of the pyramid, Maslow added the icing to the cake, as it were. He added the need for transcendence. In a 1962 paper, uh, Maslow mentioned that transcendence was a particular type of thing. He called it hierarchical integrative way of thinking. By this he meant that um, the higher is built upon, rests upon the lower, that all of the things are required below to build and develop into the thing on the top. By this he meant that uh, those who transcend are not better, but rather further along the pathway. To finish off what I hope has been a useful discussion of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and its evolution, 
I think it's important to maybe summarize what Maslow thought was self-transcendence. One of the quotes is that such individuals seek a benefit beyond the purely personal and seek a communion with the transcendent, perhaps through mystical or transpersonal experiences. They come to identify with something greater than the purely individual self, often engaging in service to others. Maslow said, the good of other people must be invoked.